tu su rekli da se čujemo, pa evo ja neću gubiti vrijeme. Ja bih vas svih lijepo pozdravila u ime školske knjige i svoje osobno. Moje ime je Sanja Ivoš i urednica sam za engleski jezik i eto domačica sam danas ovog webinara koji drže naše dvije autorice Ivana Marinić i Dora Božanić. Malić. <laughs> ja se nadam da su cure spremne, ja ih tu vidim na ovom drugom ekranu. Evo, nadam se da ih vidite i vi. I ja ne bi njima puno vremena oduzimala, ali napravit ću jedan mali kratki uvod. Čisto da vas podsjetim na neke stvari koje smo za vas pripremili na ovom odabiru. Dakle, ono što smo mi vama ove godine pripremili, to su završeci naših uzbeničkih serija za prvi i drugi jezik za engleski jezik. Dakle, to su Tiptoz 4 i Footsteps 4 kao naše predstavnici novih serija, postojeća serija Dipin 4 i Dipin 8 i dva uzbenika za drugi strani jezik Way to Go 1 i Way to Go 5. Ono što vi koji koristite naše uđbenike sigurno znate, vi koji ćete tek postati naši korisnici, samo ćemo ukratko ponoviti da imamo dvije platforme koje vam nudimo, znači uđbenici su vam na dvije platforme, na platformi Esfera učenici imaju izravan pristup svim dodatnim digitalnim sadržajima, a vi imate također podršku svu na jednom mjestu sa svim postrebnim stvarima koje ste već navikli, priučnik, tematska planiranja, vrednovanja, rješenja uđbenika itd. Druga platforma na kojoj možete uđbenik gledati to je platforma Mozabuk. Ona je prezentacijska jedna mogućnost gdje možete se malo poigrati i dodatno ako imate želju sa vašim osobnim idejama obogačivanja uđbenika i korištenja velikog repozitorija koji ta platforma u sebi nudi. Dakle, izravan pristup e-sferi iz platforme Mozabuk, tako da ne morate se prebacivati nekim posebnim načinima. Ono što je jako bitno, to je da uz svu ovu podršku koju nudimo uz uđbenike, ono na što smo naročito ponosni, a to su radne bilježnice za pomoć u učenju u sve naša izdanja koja su odobrena od Agencije za odgod obrazovanje, također zadaci za vrednovanje i sumativno i formativno također odobreni od Agencije za obrazovanje i ono što ste nas tražili i mi smo vam ponudili, a to su prijedlozi zadataka za vrednovanje učenika s teškoćama. Sve to se naravno nalazi i u našem seriji DPIN, tako da što se toga tiče serije su potpuno izjednačene. Serija za drugi strani jezik, ako vas ima danas i takvih, nudi također dva učbenika za četvrti i osmi razred sa svom podrškom koja se uz njih nudi. Osobito smo Eto bi naglasila učbenik za peti, za osmi razred Way to Go 5 koji je napisan ili koja je autorica Zvonka Iković napisala novi, dakle potpuno je novi učbenik. Uz to sve, nadam se da već koristite našu aplikaciju Asistent koja vam zaista u nekoliko klikova može olakšati pripremu uvođenja nastave. Dakle, imate sve na mobitelu, to jest na dlanu. Ono što je posebno bitno tu naglasiti da uz ova rješenja koja vam povezuju nastavničke dnevnike, kalendare, rasporede vaše i vaših razreda, klikom vas vodi na digitalne sadržaje izravno, ono što je osobito povezuje Pogodno, a to je da je na platformi u suradnji sa sručnjacima sa edukacijsko-rehabilitacijskog fakulteta imate opciju da napraviti, kreirati individualizirani plan za učenike teškoćama u nekoliko koraka. Ja vas svih pozivam da to istražite, a imate i tutoriale za učenike 
i skidanje aplikacije, instaliranje aplikacije na našem YouTube. Ono s čime smo mislili da ćemo prošle godine mjesec ili eventualno dva pretvorilo se evo u drugu godinu naše podrške vama u nastavi na daljinu. Eto, nije, nismo jako sretni što, što to postoji, ali smo s druge strane sretni što ste vi time jako zadovoljni. I evo u novom ruhu od nedavno i sve naše materijali koji vam se nalaze na školskom portalu i naš English Friday koji vam nudi još dodatnih ideja za slanje vašim učenicima. Ono na što smo jako ponosni, a to je naša, naša kampanja za osnaživanje čitalačkih navika, pogotovo čitanja na stranom jeziku. Vi znate da smo u suradnji sa izdavačkom kućom Black Cat, zastupnici smo njihovih ridera. Svi vi koji ste 5 plus korisnici dobili ste na poklon jedan rider. Ovo, ovo proljeće za vrijeme projektnih praznika imali smo čak s njima i suradnju nekoliko zanimljivih webinara gdje ste mogli dobiti na korištenje i digitalne naslove na određeno vrijeme. Mi i dalje nastavljamo obogačivati našu Book Club ponudu. Imamo jako zanimljivih ideja za jesen. So stay tuned, ja bih rekla. Ono što ste vjerojatno pratili, ako niste, ja vas upučujem na snimke na našem YouTube-u, a to je Akademija znanja, jedan vrhunski certificirani projekt priznat od ministarstva gdje vi možete sve dodatno stručno usavršavati na razne zanimljive teme i to vam se priznaje službeno kao usavršavanje. I na kraju ja bih samo rekla dvije stvari koje smo u suradnji s vama razvili. Dakle, na početku negdje tamo u devetom mjesecu kad smo imali prvi webinar, ja i kolegice Karolina, blago smo najavili nešto što ste vi tada tražili, a to su prvenstveno rješenja na klik ili jednim klikom do rješenja. Znači na našim novim listalicama imat ćete opciju da jednim klikom na pravni prostor predviđen za rješenje da vam se to rješenje i pojavi na ekranu. Ta, ta funkcionalnost bit će dostupna na svim našim učbenicama, dakle i nižih i viših razreda. Trenutno je u demo verziji dostupna uz učbenik FUSTEF 4 pa vas pozivam da na SVR to isprobate, to vam se nalazi ispod učbenika listalica s rješenjima, demo. I ono što je upravo under construction, evo prvi video je gotov, a to je video grammar tutorials koji snima naša današnja je li, prezenterica, autorica Ivana Marinić, a to je Easy Steps to Grammar, jedan serijal video gramatike koji će Uče, biti naravno učenicima dostupan u, doda, u sklopu dodatnih digitalnih sadržaja. Znači, to će biti na hrvatskom jeziku objašnjenja najvažnijih gramatičkih sadržaja, vremena, uporaba i sve ono što trebaju oni učenici koji ne znam kojeg razloga trebaju ili dodatnu pomoć ili nisu bili na nastavi ili su naravno online ili se trebaju pripremiti za nekakvu provjeru, vrednovanje i tako dalje. Tako da, eto, jako nam je to ovaj, zanimljivo. Još ćemo mi to vama i prezentirati, dobit ćete vi i upute i ovaj, ne brinite. Ja bih vas potaknula da sve pitanja, sve eventualne izazove nejasnoće upušujete na naše mail adrese, prvenstveno na podrška učiteljima. Ako imate neko posebno pitanje za sadržaj samih učbenika ili bilo kojih izdanja, možete na nekog od nas, troje nas je u uredništvu. Eto, ja se nadam... Da nisam previše odužila, obećala sam 10 minuta, evo uspjela sam u 9, tako da jako sam sretna zbog toga. I sad bi ja, evo, našu kolegicu Ivanu, ja ću sad šerat njezin screen. Je li to Ivana? Sanja, tu sam. Evo me. Eto, odlično, čujemo se, ja se nadam svi, ja ostanem s vama. 
može, hvala. Uh, so, um, hello everyone and uh, welcome to um, something which is kind of a very special to uh, Dora and me and the other uh, two authors of uh, uh, our textbook footsteps, uh, textbook series, actually footsteps. This year we are going to present footsteps four. Uh, so the eighth grade uh, textbook for uh, uh, English, and uh, we are actually very uh, proud and happy to do that. And to, today is a very special day for us. So instead of uh, uh, actually wearing my usual online teaching outfit, which consists of a tracksuit and a jacket, I actually decided to wear a pair of jeans as well. So I got dressed up and I'm quite ready to tell you something about uh, our textbook, as well as Dora, who is here with me. Uh, and uh, hi, Dora. <laughs> uh, hi. Yeah, I'm so I'm taking uh, the floor first uh, to just uh, talk generally about uh, our topic. And the topic is actually speaking uh, in EFL lessons. And then uh, Dora is going to join me with the examples from uh, our textbook in which uh, she will kind of show you that we tried to uh, really um, follow the, uh, the recent theoretical and practical uh, knowledge that uh, uh, that is there for us uh, English teachers. Uh, so uh, my name is, as Sanya has already said, Ivana Marinic, and uh, I teach at the Faculty of Education. Uh, I used to be a, a primary school teacher. I did that for 10 years, and I've been at the faculty for 12 years. So basically, I've had 22 years of experience in educating different speakers um, of English as a foreign language. Um, so uh, today we are talking about uh, speaking, uh, and here is a reason for uh, me dressing up today. So uh, the whole series is uh, has been finished, and it's there for you and our uh, students. Um, <clears throat> and speaking, actually, uh, this is kind of a definition of speaking in general, uh, it says that it's the process of building and sharing meaning through the use of verbal and nonverbal symbols in a variety of contexts. Now, if we think about uh, this, and if we try to think about uh, speaking in English uh, lessons, it's actually the same. So it's actually the process of building meaning and sharing meaning which means that uh, the important thing, and that is something which has changed a lot in teaching in the last, I don't know, 20 years perhaps or more, um, <clears throat> is the fact that we try to uh, create authentic uh, situations in which we try to help our students uh, share meaning. Um, <clears throat> Speaking in a second language uh, is perhaps the most challenging of the four skills uh, because it involves a complex uh, process of kind of building meaning. Um, as you can see this on this photo, um, I, I'm trying to compare this to a wall because if any of the bricks is missing, the process is not going to be complete. Uh, of course, our students are the learners of English, and uh, we kind of uh, don't expect uh, their speaking to be as perfect as this wall here, but we are, of course, trying to um, help them reach this stage one day. Um, why is speaking so complicated? Because it, uh, the units of spoken language are many, as you can see. So from the first steps where we teach kids how to pronounce certain words that, you know, there is a totally different pronunciation system of another language. Um, 
And then we try to teach them words so that they have some vocabulary base, which they can build on. And then we try to teach them how to stress these words and how to stress them in sentences. Uh, and then how to create a sentence using certain structures and how to share meaning using certain structures. And then later on, we try to teach them how to connect these uh, sentences in some kind of an utterance or some kind of a spoken text. So speaking uh, in a foreign language is actually quite a complicated process. Why else is it very difficult to uh, to to actually speak? Because it happens in real time. And, you know, I ask you a question and I expect you to speak. So there is a uh, not much time for thinking and uh, constructing what you want to say in writing, which is also a productive skill and also a difficult one. It's actually a bit easier because you have time to do uh, the construction of what you're trying to say. And in speaking, you're expected to do it at that moment. Uh, which is why uh, we must uh, know that our students very often um, experience anxiety because uh, of speaking. Perhaps they don't like speaking in public uh, generally, so it's not related to their knowledge of English, but just to themselves as people. Uh, and also, if they're not really sure what they have to say, and we haven't prepared that for them, and we haven't helped them prepare for uh, a, a speaking, uh, actually, a moment, for the moment when they have to say something, this might lead to even more uh, anxiety. Um, now, this is a, a definition which talks about the proficiency or knowledge. And I like it very much because it actually uh, is a piece of advice on how we teachers should experience teaching and uh, their learning. Uh, it says that it's the overall effect of many separate uses of the language, in each of which ways of talking or understanding are selected and adapted to fit the specific situation or task. To translate it into uh, very simple words. It means that uh, we teach them uh, many separate, many little, uh, little uh, important things about language. And then these separate uses of the language kind of later on have the overall effect. That is why our job is sometimes also very frustrating because we don't see immediately, you know, the results of our actions. And then we often wonder, you know, was this, uh, was this lesson good? Um, have they learned something? You know, uh, we get frustrated because they cannot do something that we kind of uh, prepared well for and we wanted them to, to learn something but they couldn't because, you know, it, uh, learning the language is actually something that happens gradually and the goal is somewhere and we might not even be there when our students finally start to, to speak English freely. So anyways, we are very important in this process and we should never actually uh, forget it. Uh, I these photos uh, just compare <clears throat> this uh, speaking skill with some of the other uh, skills uh, that we humans very often admire. So, for example, I have a friend who can uh, solve the Rubik's uh, cube in like 13 seconds or even less uh, in the competition. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, and we are all like, when he does that in front of us, we are all like, wow, this is so great, you're so crazy. And, you know, we just, wow, we're, we're so, you know, blown uh, by, by this fact that he can do it so quickly. And now you can imagine all the other things, you know, we are, we tend to admire these things, but we never, or maybe we do, but 
I don't know if you've ever thought of that, but we really admire our students for the fact that they can actually speak another language. That's so difficult. Um, I graduated from uh, the faculty uh, and uh, I had actually my second foreign language was German. And please don't ask me to speak German because I didn't teach German and I haven't taught the German actually ever since. And I've quite forgotten it. So, you know, it's, it's, I find it very difficult to speak another language and therefore our students actually also need our support in terms of, you know, helping them to cope with this and also praising them for managing uh, to do that. So basically what uh, I'm trying to say is that there are little steps that we have to take uh, whichever skill we're learning. Uh, in terms of language speaking, those are some sub skills actually that we teach one by one. And then over some time and with a lot of practice, we actually reach outcomes. <laughs> the outcomes, uh, as you can see in eighth grade, for uh, as far as speaking is concerned, are these here. And I've highlighted by making them larger some words which we found very important. And that is, you know, that uh, students need to prepare for something. And they use certain language structures. So they use them, they don't make them up. So, which means that we have to prepare certain language structures which they will use in their utterances. And then they correct their speech so we can give them the chance to think about what they've said and say it again. They plan actually what they're going to say. Um, also, if the conversation is unplanned, it has to be something which they are very familiar with. So if we are uh, trying to uh, uh, make them take part in a conversation, we either have to uh, let them plan it and prepare or without the plan, if it's something that they are already familiar with. And of course, they use the structures that we gave them. Uh, Dora will show you uh, how we did that and how we kind of uh, prepared all of this uh, for you to make it easier for you by using our textbooks uh, to actually achieve all of these uh, outcomes. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that we should uh, teach sub skills and that we should be quite satisfied if that is the product of each uh, uh, lesson which involves a speaking activity. So sometimes the sub skill that we are teaching or trying to achieve is let's say fluency uh, where we don't care for their accuracy or sometimes we will kind of uh, help them focus on accuracy with words, with pronunciation. Sometimes we will teach them how to use some phrases for some specific purposes. Sometimes we will teach them how to use appropriate language, like, you know, which sentences are rude and which are polite in English. Uh, then we will sometimes use grammar. Actually, we will use speaking to uh, teach grammar and to help them understand when and on which occasion they can use which structure. Um, sometimes we will just uh, want them to give us a one word answer. Sometimes we would want, we would, we are going to uh, uh, ask them to give us a full sentence. Uh, sometimes we'll focus on how to respond to something, how to initiate the conversation and so on and so on. So basically we cannot do all of these things at once, but you know, by uh, doing these small steps, actually by taking these small steps, eventually we kind of uh, lead our students through this process. And then after some time, when we think they're ready, 
we can uh, assign them with a project, which is also something that Dora will uh, talk about, uh, or some uh, kind of a larger spoken activity in which they will be able to actually use all of these, uh, uh, all of this uh, knowledge. Um, so, uh, just to remind ourselves about the very tasks for learning a foreign language or, or the activities. <laughs> I've seen my students uh, quite often using an activity in the lesson, but then when I ask them, you know, what the language goal of this activity was, they have no idea. So, uh, everything that we do, whether it's a game or, or a discussion or a song or whatever we choose, needs to uh, have clear language goals, first of all. Also, it needs to have meaning and purpose for our learners. So it needs to be something that they can identify with, something that will motivate them to speak. And I hope uh, that we have found ways to motivate actually your students uh, to speak. Um, things need to have all exercises or tasks or activities need to have a beginning and an end. Uh, they have to involve the learners very actively and they need to have coherence and unity for them so basically you know <clears throat> uh, i remember some of my uh, teachers who would say uh, well have a discussion about this and then we would all like be in groups and then we would all, all like be okay and then we would start like saying something and then we would because we would be interested in topic we would just continue discussing it in Croatian. Uh, so discussion itself is not a purposeful activity unless you prepare and plan and, you know, uh, give students uh, the materials they can use in the discussion itself. And then it includes the language goal as well. Um, <clears throat> most common speaking activities that are there and that we all use in our lessons what we tried to do we tried to make them actually more interesting to your students we try to make them like a bit unusual so that this is not something that they have already done or that it's not something that you know <clears throat> they've done in other or lessons not necessarily English so let me give you an example for picture describing um, we we kind of ask them to describe some pictures in a present simple and present continuous topic uh, and we ask them to look at the picture and invent a, a, a gossip uh, let's say based on that particular picture and then later on we can talk about gossiping in generally and um, how good that uh, is or bad. Um, so, of course, we paid attention to uh, the stages in a classroom task where we always um, made sure that there is a preparation, there is some core activity, and then, then there is some follow up. And then, speaking uh, in our textbooks is actually involved in all of these. Um, all of these stages. Sometimes it's part of the preparation for the core activity. Let's say when the core activity is writing, we kind of made sure that we prepare our students by talking about a certain topic and then the core activity would be writing. Or sometimes speaking is the core activity. Uh, sometimes it's just the follow up. But, you know, you should be very satisfied if after, you know, the end at the end of the lesson uh if there is a text and uh, a text is uh quite long well uh, actually but it's um, in accordance with the recommendations from the national uh, curriculum uh when the production is actually like the not that long as the very text which is in the textbook so the the production activities the productive activities are always we expect actually much less than we give in the uh, reading or listening uh, exercises um how do you support your students 
and how we tried to help you support them through motivating topics, through uh, task structure, uh, tasks which have a clear goal or pur purpose, and through a lot of uh, language uh, practice. And now, um, why we decided to uh, call this webinar actually speak and grow? Uh, because um, we are very proud of the fact that our textbook, uh, at least we, we think so, is very meaningful and very useful in terms of um, the personal growth of each and every student and in terms of that other word that we have in uh, uh, when we translate education into creation as odgoj i obrazovanje. So the first word odgoj is actually that we uh, tried to achieve by uh, giving uh, them uh, many like life examples of uh, the usage and also by helping them um, um, actually stay connected to the topics that that uh, you are discussing in English lessons. So how do we do that? We actually relied on uh, um, uh, the the topics uh, which are cross curricular, such as civic education, personal and social development, sustainable development, entrepreneurship, health, learning how to learn. Uh, and now, um, I think I hope that this was not like um, uh, uh, too much of uh, the theory without any practice. And now I'm giving the floor to Dora to just show you what these things uh, actually look like in our uh, latest textbook. Thank you. Thank Welcome. you, Ivana. Okay, so I'll first I'll just uh, introduce myself in short. Um, I've been working since 2006. Please tell me I don't look like it. Uh, but I am. Uh, I've been teaching everyone from the age of six to age 76. And uh, my, this whole story of footsteps is um, actually somewhat of a crown um, uh, in my career. So um, this is where uh, this is where I gave it my best. Um, can you see my screen right now? Yes. Yeah, we can. Oh, OK, thank you. I'll start the presentation. OK, now um, when the curricular reform uh, began, um, also uh, the, the story of footsteps and tiptoes coming to life began. And what we took on as uh, a team uh, of authors is we tried to go through all of the out outcomes and all of the theory and then pour it into what footsteps, what the series um, are today. So one of the things that uh, we are particularly proud of is um, the fact that as we were writing uh, our um, textbooks, uh, we actually uh, gave it our best to follow the uh, outcomes to the word without it being uh, um, not interesting and making them alive actually and making them relevant and meaningful to uh, the students. Um, Cross-curricular topics are something that I uh, really, really like to work on um, because uh, they give they provide our students with the uh, opportunity to um, build themselves as people, as future citizens uh, of our country and the world. Um, and also to relate to others, to relate to the communities they are part of uh, and to, to relate to, to uh, people uh, um, from all over the world because English is um, 
uh, a world language. Okay, so let's begin. Um, so this is just a, a, a little cross section of uh, the outcomes that we have covered uh, in the personal development. And um, what you will notice here is just what I have said um, through personal development, uh, students uh, develop themselves, they get to know themselves, but they also learn how to relate to um, people surrounding them and the community as a whole. Now, uh, one of the basic things um, in getting to uh, know yourself uh, is to be able to identify uh, your emotions uh, and also to clarify what lies beneath them in order to manage them. And one of the outcomes here, as you can see, is upravlja emocijama i ponašanjem. So, um, here is a list of useful expressions that they can use when identifying uh, their own emotions and explaining them. Um, in order to promote empathy, uh, you can place students in pairs and make them finish the sentences as if they were their partner. So, for example, if Ivana and I were a pair in my class, I would be finishing the sentence as if I was Ivana and Ivana would try to finish the sentences as if she was uh, me. Uh, and then uh, we would compare our answers and see how well we know each other. Is, do we know what makes us angry? Do we know what makes each other uh, sad? What takes us uh, to trust someone? These are pretty deep things, uh, not only for teens, but also for adults. Um, and we want them to become uh, healthy and happy adults. Um, Ideally, I uh, do this in a way that peers consist of students who don't communicate very often in class. Um, nowadays, I just place them in breakout rooms by using the random sorting option in Teams because uh, that's where they are um, and that's the best I can do. Now, talking about emotions is also beneficial for learning because our brains have a special setting for uh, learning to happen. And if the settings are off, then learning just won't happen. If they're upset, if they're sad, if they're overly tired, there's no way um, a topic or a task is going to make them uh, focused. Um, so at the beginning of each lesson, I uh, asked my students, how are you? I either, either asked them to grade their state of mind on a scale of one to 10, one being please get me out of here, then being, yeah, it's cool. And they respond with a number in the chat. And then when I see students who are really, really low, I ask them what's up. And then I see students who are really, really high, I ask them what's up. And then I try to build on uh, that. Uh, sometimes I tell them to find a song which illustrates their emotional state at the moment, or find a GIF or a movie quote or a meme. Um, and that's how I begin the lesson. Now, this specific task does come after a text uh, about emotions. So, this task doesn't happen the way Ivana has mentioned before, when she had a teacher who would just say, now talk about emotions. So, it's preceded with a text um, which contains definitions of emotions, uh, examples of uh, causes of different emotions. So students are provided with a scaffolding to talk about emotions. There is an introduction. And um, the goal is not to get them to retell the text. The goal is to apply the knowledge they receive in the text on their own personal experiences in order to uh, express themselves and uh, talk about their uh, emotions. Now, Ivana also mentioned sub-skills. Um, well, this particular activity may be used um, to practice accuracy or a range of words if we want them to learn a range of different emotions and explain a range of different emotions. Um, 
this is an activity which we might use. Um, this uh, lesson, relationships, is uh, a direct lesson which comes after. It comes um, directly after emotions, and it there is a, a, um, a reasoning behind that because uh, emotions and relationships are tightly knit. Now we have relationships with with people who makes us make us feel something and with whom we interact. A relationship doesn't have to be a positive one or just a romantic one. There are many different kinds of uh, relationships. So uh, a part of scaffolding uh, when it comes to relationships is already in the lesson which comes before. And um, also within the curricular uh, top, course curricular topic of personal development, relationships are fostered and students are directed towards meaningful communication and mutual understanding uh, within community. So um, they need to work on that. And this is one of the um, opportunities for uh, them to do so. Now, the lesson begins with a personality test in which students reflect on their actions, choices and preferences in order to evaluate how easily they're susceptible to manipulation. Um, that's sort of um, unexpected turn uh, when it comes to relationships. You wouldn't really uh, expect for uh, a lesson on relationships to begin with manipulation, but truth be told, manipulation is a big uh, part of relationship. We relationships, we do want other people to do as we tell them, or either to agree with us. That's that's how we are um, programmed from, I guess, the moment we are born or the moment we start speaking. So talking about manipulation is kind of a big deal, even we don't do it all that often. Um, so first they evaluate on how easily they're swayed in their convictions. Um, then there's also an activity for students to identify hidden messages. They are given a list of sentences uh, which are to be matched with different speech acts. For example, sentences which you might use to make someone feel less important or stereotype someone or compare them or criticize them. All of the things that a manipulative uh, person may try to do to you or that you may try to do to uh, uh, your um, the person you're talk talking with. Now, introduction to this particular task is a listening activity based on a recording in which a mother tries to influence a son's choice, uh, a son's choices when it comes to studying and looks, and she's not very successful in it. And that is a well-known story. Um, uh, sons and teenagers and daughters, they do turn off, turn on their music and just stop listening at some point uh, if we are boring to them. Um, and so after that recording, after uh, the students are acquainted with the whole theme thoroughly, they have a model for what they are going to do. Uh, next, and what they are going to do next is this task number seven. So it says choose a topic and do a role play in pairs using the expressions from the books. Now, always give them um, some time to prepare, okay? But be, um, be clear with the time limit because teenagers, they really like to prolong the time limit. If you tell them 10 minutes, well, for the first two or three, they're just going to chill. And then when you come to the 10th minute, they'll need more to two minutes longer. So be clear uh, with the time limit that you give them. Um, and what I like to do is to first put them, uh, put two and two pairs to practice together and show their role play, role play to each other. Then I make a larger group of pairs. Um, and then when they vote who the best ones are, they uh, present their work to the whole classroom. So not everyone presents to the whole classroom, but everyone gets to speak and everyone gets to grow. 
Um, again, here, uh, a subskill being developed, well, the best one would be responding and initiating, also repair and repetition, because if they practice a role play in a pair, then in a four, then in a group of eight, they're going to repeat the same thing over and over again. And as you see them repeating the, the role play, they're going to improve it. Um, even if they're not actively um, thinking about it, that it's just going to come come to them. So this is something that Ivana has mentioned already. Um, you can use these pictures uh, for as a, a basis for students to invent a piece of gossip and uh, through that practice uh, present simple and present continuous so this is a real focus on form um, and the subskill uh, of a range of uh, grammar um, at the same time uh, gossip is very uh, present in their life um, and this can be um, used as uh, a speaking activity of a Chinese whispers game. So a student can invent a gossip, use the sentences in task number five, uh, use the pictures that they see here, and then sit in a row and whisper the gossip to each other and then see what the fifth or sixth on, or tenth person in the row has actually heard and understood. Now, uh, you most of you have probably already done an activity like that. Uh, it's a very sobering one. Apart from being an opportunity to practice present simple and present continuous, it also sobers the students up um, with respect to the effect of uh, gossip. This is an interesting one as well. Um, so students through a story of a truly brilliant young man from my own hometown of Rijeka are introduced to the topic of talent, interest and hard work. Um, now Mark Twain said that find a job uh, you enjoy doing, you never, you will never have to work a day in your life. Um, and Frano, who is the topic, uh, who is the main character in this lesson, um, truly does love what he does, uh, and he is uh, amazingly proficient in it. Um, now, finding something you love, finding your um, professional course, finding your educational course, your educational path, is uh, a big. Uh, issue in our teenagers life. So when they are 8th grade, they need to choose um, their future school and them talking about what makes them happy, what makes them uh, fulfilled, um, what would they do if they were free of any social constraints of peer pressure, or pe of pressure from home. Um, opens their eyes towards what their potential is and uh, maybe it gives them an idea of what they how they want to continue their educational path so uh, after you uh, give them uh, the the content of the text um, the aim of which again is not to be learned by heart or retold after you give them then co that content uh, content, their task is to apply what they have learned to their own life and uh, to grow. Our next cross curricular theme is learning to learn, one of my favorite ones. And just a second. Okay, so I'll put the two of you here next to my notes. Ivana and Sanya, you don't know that you're next to my notes, but now you are my support. Notes and the two of you. Okay, so um, Ivana and I uh, agree that students, no, she receives them at the university and uh, I currently work in a, a high school. Um, and what our students um, 
do lack is the skill of uh, giving effective presentations. It's important to note that the outcomes as outlined in the curriculum stresses that students should be able to plan and structure the spoken text into a coherent and cohesive uh, whole. And in order to do so, they need to be aware of the concept of audience. They need to uh, know who the people they're talking to are. And this goes hand in hand with forming relationships and being a functioning member of um, society. They need to be aware of their surroundings, um, which, well, self-obsessed and average uh, teens aren't all that much. Um, they need to get used to thinking of the visual design of the presentation. Um, something that I have noticed is that they rarely think of what it is they want to achieve uh, with the presentation. They are not focused on the quality of the message, but on the quantity of information uh, on the slide. And more really is not more when it comes to the number of words on a slide or the use of flashy effects. Um, it is also useful for them to start getting used to the concept of attributing different elements uh, to their authors. If they use someone's work, you need to say it does not belong to you. Um, and finally, they need to work on their self-regulation. They need to plan their speech, use cognitive and metacognitive strategies to clarify their thoughts, monitor their progress, uh, and also manage their emotional state and face strange fright with uh, preparation. Uh, all that I have just mentioned is written on this page uh, and ready to be presented um, to your students. Now, again, um, this lesson beats the point if you make your students learn it by heart. What you need to do is go step by step, let them practice giving presentations uh, before you actually grade them um, and open the door so that they can see all of the value of these um, tips for them to. Tips for them. <laughs> Again, this is a good starter for uh, different routines in order to achieve uh, self-regulation in learning. Okay, so they need to be aware of the importance of um, self-assessment and some of the decent things here um, are, make really, really good pieces of advice. So after each lesson, you can you can be the ones asking your students what do you know now uh, that you did not know before uh, this lesson and then make them uh, write it down in their notebook. Um, our next cross curricular uh, topic is entrepreneurship. So this is a, a clear um, example of entrepreneurship. So um, students are first um, in, in this particular lesson, students are first uh, exposed to what the difference between hard skills and soft skills are. Um, and um, the speaking part is actually an introduction to uh, the writing. Um, now, the interesting thing is with my students, even though Ivana has said um, that speaking is one of the most difficult skills, if not the most difficult one, they still love it much more than writing. So using um, speaking as an introduction to writing actually raises their uh, interest, interest in uh, writing and um, giving them scaffolding. Now, speaking is difficult because, as Ivana said, they need to think of the, on their feet, right? But in order to think of their feet, they need to get up on their feet first. And that's what our all scaffolding that we've got in our textbooks is uh, for. So after they discuss different types of skills um, and they analyze these two examples of CVs, they write their own. Again, this is an example of a lesson uh, in which they role play uh, buying something. Um, in the entrepreneurship um, 
cross curricular topic, one of the goals is for them to take um, what's the word? Res the responsibility of their own finances and be aware of the value of things. So um, this is where they can do so. Okay, and now this is um, the first project that we're going to touch upon um, today. Uh, as Ivana has said, so first we give them these little steps. We focus on uh, different sub skills. Um, and then when they are ready, we give them a big project where they can show off everything that they um, have learned so far. So, uh, as previously mentioned, students need to become uh, more skills, uh, skilled in defining their own goals and outcomes. Okay, so uh, what I have noticed is that they are not really aware of that, uh, not really skilled in that. They don't know how to phrase where they want to get and then they meander on their way, on their way to, to the final product. Um, a project of this size uh, provides uh, a lot of uh, um, opportunity for growth in when it comes to personal development, learning how to learn, um, because they need to be aware of the steps that they take in order to um, um, in order to be successful in the project. They also need to manage themselves. If they're working in a team, then they need to talk to each other and collaborate. Um, and finally, um, this project is a social justice superhero, um, which is actually um, the, the whole project is such that it doesn't cover just one cross curricular uh, topic. So it's not just about um entrepreneurship and getting a project um finished from the beginning to the end getting through it um it also helps us introduce the topic of this uh sustainable development now sustainable development is not just about um ecology which is something that comes to mind uh first right but it's also about gender equality and clean water and uh, no poverty, zero hunger, um, life on land, affordable energy, peace and justice, uh, partnership. So sustainable development and all of these are sustainable development goals of the UN for 2030 actually encompasses uh, civic education as well. So this is a lesson um, which focuses on our needs and makes students evaluate uh, if their wishes are their needs, is are the things that they might crave, like a large house with a swimming pool. Is that something they really need in their life to uh, achieve a goal or to develop as people or to grow? Um, and then there's a lesson on upcycling, one of my favorite activities ever, because it gives life to discarded, um, to discarded, uh, objects, um, and also upcycling, uh, ones that they have upcycled something, they can present it to the rest of the class, um, and help the community become more sustainable. The next uh, cross curricular uh, topic is health. Now, uh, here um, we actually have, I have two uh, lessons here. I had two lessons here, but now I have only one. Um, so in this lesson, students discuss stress, how to recognize it and how to deal with it. Students are asked to give advice to a girl who feels stressed up, out, but again, not before they read the text on what stress does to our bodies um, and not before doing a, a gap fill task thematically focused on tips uh, of how to relax. This is a pretty big deal nowadays because our students are feeling 
uh, very stressed out with all of the uncertainty, uh, uncertainty and uh, changes which happen in their education, them being at home, then not being at home, then being in class, half of them being at home and so on. Um, now, this lesson can also be augmented by adding a body scan activity. A body scan activity is a mindfulness technique to relax your body. Uh, I was I first I was first worried to use it uh, um, in class. Um, so the first time I did use it was online. Uh, I sent them a link with a body scan activity in which a person tells you now become aware of your toes and your feet and your calves and your knees. Um, and I did so to avoid giggles because I mean teens when you tell them think about your toes they're going to burst out laughing. Um, so. I wanted them to use that in a safe space of uh, their home, but then I got uh, brave and uh, I tried to do it in class and it was a great success. So when they go through uh, all of the text and the tips and everything, then students have the opportunity to show what they have just learned. Um, and give advice to a girl whose name is Alicia. Uh, on how to relax and how to manage stress. Um, and then finally, this is a kind of a, a taboo um, topic, so perfecting humans. So this is, um, there is a discussion, uh, this is a discussion preceded by a text on human enhancement uh, and positive and potentially negative aspects of cosmetic surgery, chemicals, mechanical implants. And after reading and uh, doing comprehension tasks, there is a would you ever activity. Um, again, give students time to think about what they're going to say about two to three min minutes and stress the importance of them using the expressions in the uh, useful expression uh, books. So um, here they're going to uh, practice using functions and phrases for uh, specific purposes. Um, now, speaking does imply an element of uncertainty, but classroom needs to provide tools for students to grow enough to face them and giving them uh, time to prepare and giving them a special focus uh, helps them prepare. And finally, civic education. I'm going to skip some things now. Actually, I'll come back because I see that I'm close to uh, the end here and I have uh, gone through the time li limit, I think. So um, again, this is also one of my favorite things in the whole book uh, because it connects the past and the present. It connects uh, Germany being divided into two countries and the fall of the Berlin Wall. Uh, again, with uh, George Floyd and Fridays for Future protests in 2019. So um, students can uh, think about and analyze different protests around the world um, and make a presentation about them. At the same time, they can deal with prejudice um, in Croatia and they can try to identify what kind of prejudice is present here because there are uh, some types of prejudice present in uh, Croatia and they should be aware of that. And finally, um, I love this one uh, because this project focus, focuses on how to communicate, how to have a conversation. And it stresses the fact that in order to speak and grow, first students need to learn how to listen and teenagers again as self-absorbed and craving uh, modes of expression, self-expression, they forget to listen. So uh, I found this project as one of the most valuable ones uh, in our uh, textbook and I hope you're going to like it as much as I do. Okay, this would be it for me.
Čujemo se? Ja se nadam. Yes. Yes. A, hvala, cure. A, ja vam se a, zahvaljujem a, od srca. A, ja sam svaku a, vježbicu ove knjige <laughs> prošla jedno 20 puta tijekom a, izrade, ali evo ovako slušajući a, a, Doru i Ivanu, a, Mogu reći da mi je žao što neću ovaj, u, u rujnu sjesti u učionicu i, i početi a, raditi s učenicima. Eto, moj posao je takav da to nije u planu, ali e, iskreno mi to evo, nedostaje. E, ja se nadam da ste vi svi e, dobili bar mali u, u, uvid e, koliko je ovo sjajan učbenik i koliko je on Um, ostvario ishode kurikuluma koji se povremeno uh, čitajući ih onako sp- pogotovo u ovim verzijama koje su do vas izdali čine vrlo zbunjujući i, i vrlo suhoparni i ja, ja se zaista zahvaljujem autoricama koje su ga uh, učini, o, odjenule u jednu uh, uh, sjajnu haljinu i, i mislim da će vaši učenici zaista uživati. Oni koji su radili uh, prošlu školsku godinu sa Footstep 3 a stvarno su javili da su učenici uživali, da su bili izuzetno motivirani upravo za speaking activities. Kao što smo rekli, to je najteže postići, tako da smo mi zaista ponosni na, na taj uspjeh. Eto, ja sam tu malo gledala čet, vidim da su svi pozorno slušali <laughs> Ivanu i Doru i mislim da Evo mogu i snimku ovog webinara si e, ponovo ovaj, tu i tamo pustiti, ako jednostavno e, budu htjeli malo e, ponoviti e, ovu stotinu ideja koje su tu e, e, njima prezentirane. Nadam se da su svi dobili e, nekakav poticaj da sad ponovo prilistaju udžbenik e, sa jednom novom, e, iz jednog novog kuta. E, I e, nestrpljivo čekamo i priručnik koji će uz uđbenik ponuditi još sjajnih ideja, dodatnih digitalnih sadržaja i e, zaista se nadam da ćete uživati onoliko koliko smo mi uživali e, radeći na ovom projektu. Ja bih se zahvalila svima. E, ovo je kraj jedne, ja mislim, četvrogodišnjeg putovanja od prvog iščitavanja kurikuluma <laughs> tri četiri godine. Evo ja sam stvarno ponosna sa mojim autoricama da smo iznijeli i ovaj zadnji a, i formatom je najveći primijetit ćete uđbenik za vaše osmaše. Eto, a, ja bih se svima zahvala na a, strpljenju i na, a, znam da ste u sred velikog posla. Ali eto, uskoro će odabir i mi se zaista nadamo da ćete prepoznati sve odlike našeg novog učbenika Footsteps 4. Evo, ako cure imaju nešto za dodat. Pa evo, ja bih se još samo tebi, Sanja, zahvalila na uredništvu i ovo što si rekla, to je istina, znači svaki zadatak ne znam koliko puta. Zahvala bih se svima koji su bili danas s nama. I vama koji ste pisali komentare, puno vam hvala. Svaki feedback na užbenike i sve što se u razredu događa je uvijek dobrodošao. I nekako zapravo jedva čekamo da vidimo što, što, će, što ćete vi i što će učenici reći kada ih prime u ruke. Eto. I to je to. Meni žao što Dora nije pokazala i onih par primjera koje je preskočila, ali dobro, to sam ja. To ćemo, pustit ćemo učiteljima da sami listaju i nađu sad u svjetlu ovih činjenica vrlo, vrlo mnogo speaking activities, pomno izrađenih i promišljenih i vrlo, vrlo zanimljivih učenicima. Evo, ja se nadam da ste s nama uživali. Ja, ja jesam, iako sam učbenik, <laughs> znam na pamet i svima se zahvaljujem i nadam se da se sljedeći put vidimo u živo. Konačno to govorim već evo drugu godinu, ali... Ja se stvarno nadam da ćemo se sljedeće školske godine sa autoricama družiti i uživo na live radionicama gdje ćete ih moći doživjeti uh, onako kako uh, zaista treba. Ovaj, online život je, eto, nažalost, <laughs> prisiljeni smo na njega. Eto, ja sam uh, zahvaljujem još jednom i vidimo se 
nekom drugom prilikom. Hvala svima. Hvala. Bog. Bog.